significant figures. A Dr. Kelly reaction. First of all, we all know what logs are. They're fun, they're wonderful, and they're wood. In case you don't remember, logs are a mathematical operation. Most of the time when we say log, we're talking about numbers base 10. And the easiest way to describe a log is to simply show you. The log of the number 10 to the x power would be x. For example, if I took the log of 100, the answer would be 2. Why? Because you have to raise 10 to the second power in order to get 100. Just to beat the horse entirely into the ground, if I took the log of 1,000, it would be 3. Why? Because I have to raise 10 to the third power in order to get the number 1,000. So when you take the log of something, what you're asking is you're asking, what number do I have to raise 10 to in order to get the number shown? When it comes to dealing with logs and sig figs, figs we have a particular challenge. The best way to illustrate and to talk about this challenge is to look at an example. All right, let's take the log of 314. We punch log 314 into our calculator, and our calculator gives us 2.4969. Six four eight. Don't worry if your calculator gives you something slightly different, um, but that's what my calculator gives me. Obviously, if you know nothing about sig figs, this is still way too many sig figs. You can understand and see that very clearly. So you know that this is indeed a calculator lie. So what is the correct number of sig figs? The rule is as follows. The number of sig figs The number of sig figs and the number you are taking the log of equals the number of decimal places in the answer. In other words, 314 has three sig figs. One, two, three. Therefore, my answer should have three decimal places. So I come up here and three decimal places would be one, two, three, round on the basis of that nine. So I have 2.497 as my answer. Three sig figs here, three decimal places, here. I think this sig fig rules is actually one of the easier to understand. If you don't want to memorize it, you can also understand it. L let's take a look at the logic behind this sig fig rule. And yes, there is actual logic. If we write 314 in scientific notation, 1, 2, moved our decimal over two places, so it would be 3.4 times 10 to the 2. When we look at this number in scientific notation, how many sig figs do we have? say that this number has? And you're saying, uh, Dr. Kelly, why are you bothering to ask us this, right? I mean, we look at 3.14 times 10 to the second, and we know it's got three sig figs there. Yeah, you do know it has three sig figs. 
What about the two there? Isn't that two a number? Yeah, that two's a number, but do we consider that two a sig fig? No, it's, it's just representing place value. Of course we don't consider it a number. It's just a way of denoting place value. Aha! And when we took the log of 314, what was our answer? Our answer was 2.497. It's not coincidence that we had a 2 there and we had a 2 there. Turns out when you take the log of something, the numbers the numbers to the left of the decimal represent the power of 10. So of course we wouldn't consider them sig figs. Just like when we were writing this number in scientific notation, we didn't consider the two sig fit a sig fig because it was representing place value. We don't do that when we are writing the log because this two here is simply this two here rewritten and it's the decimal value here that actually represents the numeric value here. So if we have three sig figs here, we have three decimal places there. Chemistry is easy, life is hard, yes? Let's take a look at another example. When taking the log, the number of decimal points in your answer is equal to the number of significant figures in the number you took the log of. For example, let's take a look at do to do to do to do. Ah, that's right. When in doubt, go 42. Take the log of 42.4. When I take the log of 42.4, I go to my calculator. I hit log 42.4, close parentheses and I get 1.62736585 as my calcul 57 as my calculator lie If I look at my number right here, I have three sig figs. So I should have three decimal points in my answer. So I'm going to round on the basis of that three, 1.627. Let's do another example. Let's really kick it up a notch and let's take the log of 55,300, oh, well, but not, um, 55,311. All right, so I punch that into my calculator. Log 55,311. And the calculator lie is 4.74281151. If I look at my original number here, I have five sig figs. So I should have five decimal places in my answer. One, two, three, four, five. round on the basis of that one, so I'm left with 4.74281 as my answer. Let's make sure this horse is thoroughly dead, plus I'm having a really good time. Matter of fact, I'm having such a good time, 
I want to put a cherry on this lesson. Why don't you write down cherry? C-H-E-R-R-Y. Cherry. All right. Let's take the log of 7.3 times 10 to the 12th. So I put that into my calculator. Log 7.3 second e, e, 12, close parentheses, and I get 12.8, so, matter of fact, let me erase that here, do, 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 do. my calculator gives me 12.863322286. Two, if I look at my answer, uh, if I look at my initial number, I have two sig figs. Therefore, my answer should have two decimal places. Wait, Dr. Kelly, we have more than one number to the left of the decimal. Doesn't matter. Why? Go back to our logic behind this. The numbers to the left of the decimal are just representing place value. This 12 simply tells us the location of the decimal in the original number. So our sig figs are determined solely based on our decimal places here. Two sig figs here, two decimal places here. So a correct answer would be 12.86. Chemistry is easy, life is hard, yes? All right, let's keep going. All right, try solving these three problems on your own to the correct number of sig figs. What that means is pause me before you look at the answers, right? Are you pausing me? No, this isn't meant to be one of those long, awkward pauses that people often have in conversations with me. This is meant to be a pause for you to work the problems. You're pausing me. I know you paused me. Pause me. If you don't pause me, I'm going to talk forever while you do the problems. All right. Thank you for pausing me. I know you paused me. I know I can trust you. So let's take a look at these answers here. We've got the log of 3.798 to the 8th power. When we do that problem, our calculator gives us 8.579555, whoops, no, one too many fives, 5.49. Our original number had one, two, three, four sig figs, so we should have four decimals. One, two, three, four. Round on the basis of the five, and we get 8.5796 as our answer. Down here, we have the log of 215. We have three sig figs, so we should have three decimal places. So log 215, 2.33243846 is the calculator lie. Three decimal places, one, two, three, round on the basis of the four only, and that gives us 2.332 as our answer. One more, and then we're done going with logs this direction. So now we take the log of 6.022 times 10 to the 23rd, and our calculator tells us the, the answer is 23.77974075. Well, the number we took the log of had 1, 2, 3, 4 sig figs. So we need four decimal places, one, two, three, four. Round on the basis of the four there. There you go. Chemistry is easy, life is hard. No, it is also hard. Oak wood. Why don't you write down oak? O-A-K. Oak. Up till now, we've just dealt with logs in base 10. Another common... Um, 
variation is what's known as the natural log. The natural log is base E. E is a number 2.71828 that is because of special properties it has it's used very common in the math and sciences also known as the natural log and when we say natural log what we're asking is the natural log of e to the x is equal to x in other words what number do I have to raise 2.71822 in order to get that number for example For example, e squared would be do 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 do. Sorry, I worked my calculator. Work at the calculator. Work at the calculator. Is seven point three eight nine zero five. So the natural log of seven point three eight nine. 0, 0.5 would be 2, right? Actually, we're getting it 1.9 repeating here, but it's basically 2, and that gives you an idea of what the log is, what, what the natural log is. The, sig, the rule for handling sig figs for the natural log is the exact same as it is for logs. The natural log of x the number of sig figs and the number you are taking the natural log of the the number of the number of sig figs in the number you are taking the natural log of is equal to the number of decimal places in the answer. The exact same rule that you had before. For example, let's work an example here. Uh, do, 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 do. Graphics are done on the fly. The natural log of 8.33 equals, all right, so I'm going to go to my calculator. I'm going to punch in natural log, 8.33. And my calculator is going to give me a big old lie. And it's going to tell me 2.119863 I hit the Powerball, um, 5, 6. So that's what my calculator tells me. That's my calculator lie. Lie! If we look at our number that we took the log of, there are three sig figs here. Therefore, I should have three decimal places in my answer. One, two, three. Once again, I get the numbers to the left for free. I don't have to pay for them with sig figs. So we round and we would get 1.20, right? We're rounding on the basis of that 8, which rounds the 9 up to a 0. So that would be our answer. Three sig figs here, three decimal points there. Let's make sure the horse is dead. The natural log of 36 
point eight nine would be, I go to my calculator, I punch it in, natural log thirty six point eight nine, and I get three point six zero seven nine four zero five one two back. I have four sig figs here, so I should have four decimal places down here. One, two, three, four, round on the basis of the four, and my correct answer is 3.6079. Chemistry's easy, life is hard, yes? How about we give one for you to try yourself? The natural log of 3.6079. 8, 6, times 10 to the 5th. Punch that into your calculator. Pause me first, all right? Pause me, work it yourself, and then see what you get. All right, hopefully you paused me like I asked, and I know you did, and worked it yourself. And if you did that, you got 12.8. Six three five nine two six five as the calculator lie. You look up here, you have one, two, three sig figs. So you should have three decimal places. These guys are free. So three decimal places, one, two, three, round on the basis of that five, and your correct answer is twelve point eight six four. Booyah! All right, so we're comfortable going that way. What about undoing the logs? In what has to be one of my favoritely named math terms, when we undo a log, we use the anti-log. Just like there's a monitor and an anti-monitor, there has to be an anti-log to the log. The anti-log can actually be written two ways. Ten to the x is an anti-log, is one way of solving the anti-log, or we would say the anti-log of x. For example, the anti-log of two is one hundred is the opposite of the log. We would say the anti-log of 4 is 10 to the 4th or 10,000. Chemistry is easy. Life is hard, yes? Most of you do not have an anti-log key on your calculator. What do you have? Instead, you have a 10x key. If you can't find it, for example, on the TX um, 30x2s that I recommended you guys get for the class, your 10x key is actually located second key, and then you have to hit the log key. And that's how you solve for the anti log. What about sig figs? We're undoing a log. We're, we are undoing a log. So we're going to be using that same rule, but in reverse. The rule is going to go like this. The number of decimal places The number of decimal places and the number you're taking the log of equals the number of sig figs in the answer, right? If we're undoing the operation, it makes sense that the rule to undo it 
regarding sig figs would also be the opposite. In other words, the number of decimal places in that number is equal to the number of sig figs in the answer. For example, 10 to the 4.332 would be punched into our calculator. So we'd go second, on my calculator at least, we'd go second. We hit that log button that gives us 10 to the x. 4.332, is the calculator lie. If we look at the number we took the anti-log of, we have three decimal places. So we should have three sig figs, period. One, two, three. Three sig figs, period. Remember when you're, so we're going to round on the basis of that seven. You can't destroy place value. So two, one, five, zero, zero. If we wanted to be really clear with people, we could put in scientific notation. 2.15 times 10 to the 1, 2, 3, 4. 10 to the 4th. Chemistry's easy, life is hard, yes? Let's work another example just to make sure we're all on the same page. All right, let's take the anti-log of 6.231. So that means on my calculator, I'm going to punch in 10 to the 6.2313. And I'm going to do that, and I'm going to get, let's see, second 10x, 6.2313. One, three, and I really hope you're doing these along with me, right? I hope you're just not watching passively, right? You got your calculator out and you're working with this with me. Your calculator tells you 170-3334.724. That's the calculator lie. There are four decimal places in the number I took the anti-log of. Therefore, I'm going to have four sig figs in my answer. One, two, three, four. I round on the basis of that three. Can't destroy place value. Let's use um, scientific notation. Just to make it clear how many sig figs we have. We have four sig figs here because we had four decimal places there. Let's give you one, let's give you home gamers one to try. I lied. I decided I wanted to give you two to try at home. So pause me right here and do these yourself. Pause me. I said pause me. I don't care how long you've been listening to me. Pause me! Did you pause me? I hope so. All right. If, I, if you didn't pause me, I am glaring at you evilly right now. Okay. So let's take a look at this. First one, 10 to the x, 3.22. That gives me a calculator lie of 1659.586907. I have two decimal places, so I should only have two sig figs. I'm going to round on the basis of that five. Let's put it in scientific notation so that I realize I only have two sig figs, or so that other people can recognize that fact easily. And that gives me one, two, three sig figs. I'm sorry, 10 to the third. 1.7, two sig figs, um, 10 to the third power, though. 1.7 times 10 to the third. Two sig figs, two decimal places here, therefore two sig figs here. Long day, getting tired. Um, let's do this one. Punch into my calculator, 10 to the 4.4431, and that gives me a calculator lie of 27739.58759. 
I have four decimal places here, and therefore I should have four sig figs here. One, two, three, four. Round on the basis of that alone. Two, seven, seven, four, zero. In sig figs, I mean in scientific notation, 2.774 times 10 to the fourth. Chemistry is easy. Life is hard, yes? And once again, you can see the logic behind the sig fig rule. Because where does the number before the decimal line up? Where does that 4 line up, wind up? Hey, it winds up right there when we put the number in scientific notation. Where does the 3 wind up from right here? It winds up right here on the, the 10 in scientific notation. That's why we don't count the numbers to the left of the decimal as significant when we're taking anti-logs. Chemistry is easy, life is hard. If we're undoing the natural log, the opposite operation of the natural log is e to the x. And the same rule is going to apply. The number of decimals and the number you're raising x to equals the number of decimals and the number you're raising x to equals the number of sig figs in the answer. For example, e to the, I don't know, let's go 5.663. I'm going to go to my calculator, and by the way, where will I find that e to the x key? Your e to the x key on my, second, on my class recommended calculator is the shift function above the natural log. So you'd hit second, and then you'd hit the natural log key. So I'm going to my calculator, and I'm putting in my e to the x, 5.663, close parentheses, and my calculator lies to me. How rude! 2.88. Zero one one three eight one nine is what my calculator give, gives me. This number right here has three decimal places, and because it has three decimal places, I'm going to have three significant figures over here. So I'm going to round on the basis of that zero, and that gives me a final answer of 288. Unfortunately, when we switch E's, this 5 doesn't pop up again in scientific notation, and the reason being is we've changed bases. We've gone from using base 10 to using base 2.718, or E. Let's give you one to try. Before you try this one, why don't you write down for me, oh no, where did my book go? Why don't you write down for me the word elm? Write there, down the word elm. Thank you for writing down the word elm. Solve this one. 12 point, e to the 12.7177. That's a 7 right there. Really, these dire lists are hard to write with. All right, pause me, work it yourself. All right, did you pause me? Please tell me you paused me. I know you paused me because I said this was the last example and you for sure didn't want to miss it. All right, so you paused me. You've gone to your calculator and you've pressed e to the x, 12.7177, and you've gotten as an answer Three 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 six zero zero point six eight four one. 
out is the lie. If we look at our number here, we have four decimal places. We don't pay for these guys, only for our four decimal spaces. So we're going to have four sig figs in our answer. Four decimal places, four sig figs, one, two, three, four. So three, 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 six, zero, zero, because we can't destroy place value. But we can be more commutative if we put it in scientific notation. And that cost us one, two, three, four, five. We have to move it over five. So it's 3.36 times 10 to the fifth. Chemistry is easy, life is hard. Hope you enjoyed the show. See you on the lab side.